before you got your tree picked out or your shrub, you got your tools ready, you have your, your implements, your soil additions to plant in there, you know where you want to plant it. You've seen this on the back of trucks all over the place. Call before you <laughs> dig. Know before you dig. Before you start digging into the ground, you better make sure there's not a power line going under there. There's a power line right under here, so we're not going to dig right here. There could be water lines or gas lines. The next step that I do is I set my shovel down and I place my tree shrub where I want it to go. Now, if you're planting it on a slope, that's okay. Plant it level. You can do a little backfilling. We'll talk about that. Picked out where you want it to go. The next step is then I take the shovel and I think about making the hole three times as big as the plant in the pot. My general rule that I use is I basically just take the shovel width out from the side of the pot and that's where I start my hole. <coughs> and I'll just start to dig that. I don't really dig it. I'm just marking out the barrier and the outside so I can find it again. If you need to uh, check back in with your width, you can. Also remember that this is nature and horticulture and it's not an exact thing. Nature has a great balancing. <laughs> so now I've got the basic outline. And I'm going to try not to fall off to this little area. So I've got it all specked out. Yeah, move the plant out of the way. You don't need it anymore. Now you start to dig. If you want, depending on what you're doing and what you're digging into, I'll sometimes take off this top layer with the grasses and the weeds, set that to the side and then put it on top and it kind of makes it look like the plant's been there a long time. If you're going to mulch, you don't have to do that. I don't think we're necessarily mulching. And so, uh, dig it out, set it to the side. I will, um, often just for ease, uh, just kind of pull the soil out around it so that when I'm backfilling, it's easier to get it back into. You're always gonna end up with more dirt than you started with, more soil, for two reasons. One, you're gonna displace it with the potting mix and the soil that's in there. Two, whenever you dig, it fluffs, fluffs things up, and then it compacts and settles back in. If you're on a really steeper slope, you can start to do a little uh, cut and fill um, so you, what I mean is you would uh, use some of the dirt from the upslope part to bolster up the bottom so you can plant it level. The plant will and the earth will settle into its area, but you don't want on a steep slope your plant coming out that direction from it. That's going to probably fall. So you want it even on a steep slope, you want it to try to stand upright. So what you do is you take some of this cut and build up a little bit, making a little trellis. Doesn't have to be anything huge. On this uh, slope, I don't have to do that at all. So, just. That's the most common injury in horticulture is to the hands. Wear gloves, wear gloves. I know, I like to touch the dirt too. Wear gloves doing any kind of heavier work, doing any pruning, snipping, wear gloves. You'll thank me later. Ah. You'll find rocks. If there's a big giant boulder, <laughs> find a different place, right? <laughs> if you get rocks, you can pull them out, use them on top a little bit for decoration, but there's no problem if there's rocks in the backfill soil. 
the roots know what to do around rocks. They're used to it. Um, I've got the basic outline of my um, hole dug. Now I gotta do a whole lot of work. Luckily I enjoy this stuff. Um, some people join gyms. They pay a gym membership. I work outside. I forgot I was digging a hole when I put on sandals this morning. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. But I'm glad, I'm honored to be able to dig a hole and plant this shrub. Because I'll be able to come back forever and see this button bush here and know I planted it. And that feels pretty good. So even though I'm gonna be adding in some of this soil, some of this native soil that's here back in, I still wanna dig out and prep the hole completely and then backfill as needed. And that's so that I'm not missing any uh, abrasions in there and I can make sure that it's mixed well with the uh, compost that is gonna go in with it. Um, That's looking pretty good. All right, so what I like to do next is I check. I go, okay, how am I doing? Yeah, that's deeper. That's fuller. That's pretty good. That's good enough for this plant in this situation. Good enough for me in the time I want to spend doing it. And so the next step is to... Um, very important. Where I've dug the sides of this hole, it's often really smooth. Just rough that up a little bit. You don't want smooth lines in nature that could keep it from the root. If you mix the native soil back in with the potting mix or the, the compost you're gonna put in there and you mix it back together, the roots of the plant will recognize that native soil when it leaves where the food is or the compost. And so it'll know that the soil next to it is also good to grow into. So I do that. And then I do a little uh, back fill. And you can always um, check it to make sure you're putting in enough. Um, I'll then take good compost and mix in a little bit, just a little bit, not a lot. Um, I have general rough rules, but I never measure. I don't do that in my cooking either. It's delicious. Ask me. So then I take this, mix it in together. And that's what the root's gonna sit on. Another really fun thing to do that's helpful is I make a little, uh, cone or mound in the center and if anybody wants to come in and take a look in the hole to see what that looks like and that's where the roots are going to set on if when I take it out of the pot if there's any loose roots I can move them and drape them around that but that's what it's going to set on the next thing I do is not take the plant out of the pot but this is where I set it in there and I get an idea of is it gonna be good and the truth is with this it has one side higher one side lower so we're gonna work on the high side the low side will settle so I need a little bit more soil but not much I think that's gonna do And the depth. Yeah. Roughly. You do three times as deep? Oh, because you build it back up. Then you build it back up. Okay. Then. But you want it loose. For the first initial growth. You don't want it to have to struggle too much when it's setting its brand new routine. Let it get a, a head start before you turn it over and say you're on your own now. now here is something. That's more of an aesthetic, but it's very important because you're going to be looking at your plants, right? Often, 
as they're growing in pots, there's one or two sides of it that might look better. So play with that. Or maybe you want it to not grow off towards a shelter. You know, think about the mature height and size of the tree. This is a eight foot, but maybe 20 foot wide spread. So it's eventually gonna come over into this area, but that's okay. It won't go too much farther here. And then people will be on the railing and looking at the butterflies on the flower and it'll be very beautiful. So now I've got it sighted well. When I'm, when I'm setting it down and looking at it, I actually set it in and walk away. I don't like that at all, actually. From here, it looks really flat and boring. So I'm going to play. Eventually, the plant will grow how it wants to. But even in this short term, I think that kind of looks better. Oh, yeah. How do y'all feel? Just a little adjustment like that. That's great. Now, people have a hard time. You're going to notice me uh, grabbing by the stem. I know. I'm going to encourage y'all not to do that. <laughs> I do it all the time. But it's always better to hold the plants by the pot so you don't do any damage. Now, how to get the plant out of the pot, especially with larger ones. That can be a problem and a struggle for folks at times. One of my favorite ways of doing it is to lay it on its side and step it. And then you can roll it and step it. And then while it's still on its side, you can slide it out real easy. Now I've got it out. What I like to do, I usually have hand tools for this that I wear. I can do it with a shovel. If you do forget it, you can do it. So um, lightly damage the roots. I know. They respond to that light damage by recovering and growing new ones. So you can just you can just knock out a little bit. You don't have to like cuss it. If it's root bound with a lot of roots at the base. <laughs> you can take your hand, you can take pruners and just kind of lightly disturb it. You don't have to rip it off. If it's a little herbaceous plant, say you're planting like um, some zinnias or something, you can rip that bottom off and they'll respond well. You don't have to do that so much for here. So then you set it back in. Make sure that it's in the, in the planting plane you want it. Make sure that it's going to be not buried. You can use a board. You can use a shovel handle. That's a little low. Let's prop that up. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. So that looks good to me because it's going to be a little high on that side, slightly low on that side. So now, turn the back fill. And that's just as simple as it sounds. You, if you want to save the tops, I encourage that. It looks kind of nice. Other than that, as you're doing it, don't be afraid to spread it out even. And then um, don't be scared of the rocks or any of that. either the shovel part or the handle to kind of tamp it in. You don't want to step it down and compact it, but just trying to make sure, especially if you saw that little uh, cone that I made, and then the plant sitting up on top of that, you don't want it loose and aired underneath. So you come in and fill it in around that a little bit.
as you get you get it back filled like this and you realize you buried it too deep you can kind of gently lift it like that to lift it up a little bit and let things settle under it this for me is really great i'm gonna add a little bit more back fill to this back side and then i'm also going to use a little bit of rock um so i will sometimes just uh for kicks and support if you find some of the rocks that came up you can put them downhill to try to hold some dirt in but remember that's just a short term rocks don't hold in soil plant roots hold in soil if you're having erosion problems don't put brick of back rock in there thinking it's going to hold the bank in that's not what does it plants do it plant plants plants to save the world so now i got it in there and i can use some of this <laughs> this is lightly watering and you can also, when you're doing that, especially when you got freshly made soil hole, you're gonna, much better. So this is still the lightly watering. I just am dampening the sponge. And we, I forgot what tree is that one? Button bush. Oh, that's the button bush. Okay. It grows near water. Um, for a better video, I should have taken my long sleeve shirt off, plus it's warming up because. <laughs> oh. Oh, the one that looks like the coronavirus. <laughs> Wildflower of the year this year for the Virginia Native Plant Society. Cephalanthus. Uh, no, Occidentalis, sorry. Is that a hummingbird moth on That's it? That's a hummingbird moth. Cool. Yeah, hummingbird clear wing moth onto it. They love these things. So now I'm going to water it in. Um, watering it and spreading it all around, but really if it's a slope, think about the uphill side. What you can do is if you see it start to just flow, you can actually, because the native plants would like to be either uh, flat with the soil or raised above, you can actually make a little depression, kind of like the winter is gonna do to my psyche here in a few months, <laughs> seasonally. And uh, that way there's a little water well. Concentrating on the whole area, but also thinking about the zone. If you get wash off like that, then you want to do something about it because it's not going to hold it in. So I'll uh, use the rock a little bit. Ideally, you're going to want to get some uh, soil in there because rocks don't do it. They're not going to hold the water. Um, Looks pretty good to me. That planted probably would have moved that a little bit, but it's in there. As a final step, I, I have a, another general rule, no naked soil, no bare soil, never bare soil. Not never, because never, saying never is also a rule. Mm. So 90 times, 90% 90 of the year, you don't want any bare soil. Why? The reason for that is bare soil evaporates and loses water. Water is necessary not just for the plant, but especially for the bacteria and fungi doing the work of making this plant live. And so I'll come in and just give a little light sprinkle. This isn't the mulch volcano. That's just putting a light little cover on top. Then give that a little sprinkle so it wants to stay. And you're done. Wash your hands, pick up your tools, and move on to the next 500.